Welcome students to my mini lecture on time value of money. This is one of the most important topics that you're going to cover in your college career. Uh, and you'll hit this in several of your accounting classes. You'll hit this in a few of your economics classes, specifically microeconomics. And certainly you're going to cover this in all of your finance classes. So if you master this topic now, you'll get a repeat of in, in several of your, your courses to come. So make sure that you pay attention. You really get a good understanding when you cover this the first time. Uh, first of all, as with all of my lectures, you can download this presentation and the related study materials on Google Docs. And I've got the links over on the, on the right-hand side in the description. I've got a little file here for you to look at on NASA's website that talks about present value. Importantly, you're going to need a calculator and the present value, future value, present value, future value annuity tables. You don't actually have to have the tables in order to watch this presentation, but uh, uh, you will need them handy at some point. And when I say calculator, I'd prefer that you get a good financial calculator, HP 10B or HP 17B2. I think are great calculators. If you are college students now, you shouldn't be calculating things on your telephone. Uh, Importantly, though, I want to make sure that you understand the theory behind these tables. One of the big failings is that college students just try and pick these tables up and guess which one, and they don't have really appreciation of how they work. We're going to teach you here how they, the, the tables work. So first, let's start with a, a quandary. We have uh, $10,000 that we're going to receive 10 years from now. Um, Another way of saying that, and you'll see this in, in your, your questions, they'll say, what would I need to put in the bank today to have $10,000 10 years from now? So this is, is purely a time value of money problem. The key thing that we don't know here is what is the interest rate? If the interest rate is zero, then present value and future value are exactly the same. If the interest rate is greater than zero, which you know, we would expect a great interest rate greater than zero when there's inflation. And the average inflation in the U.S. is about 2.5% over the last 100 years. So if there's any in interest greater than zero, then the present value is going to be less than the future value, and that makes sense. If I put money in the bank today, it's going to accumulate interest over, over the next 10 years. So when we do a present value problem, present value is talking about today. Present value is always going to be less than if you just added the payments up. And that's how you should, should start looking for these things. Next, okay, so we're assuming a 10% interest rate. We could manually calculate this by taking 1.1 times 1.1 and doing that 10 times. Or 1.1, 1 plus the interest rate to the 10th power. And if some calculators, they don't have that little carrot, they've got a Y to the X key. But if you punch that in, you'll get 2.5937. Well, if we multiply that 10 times $10,000, that gives us $25,000. That's, that's not what we're looking for. That's a future value uh, money factor. What we want to know is what is the present value? How much money would I need to put in the bank today in order for it to be worth $10,000 10 years from now? Well, I know if the present value today is X, if I multiply that times the future value, 2.5937 that we calculated here, that'll give us $10,000. So I do a little bit of algebra, and I calculate that the present value of the $10,000 discounted for 10 periods of 10% is $3,844.40. And I've given you an alter alternate calculation here, uh, raising it to a negative 10. We'll give you the same answer. And I show you these because these two, the present value and the future value, are inverses of one another. If you take 1 divided by 2.5937, you will get $3,844.40. I'm sorry, 0 0.38444. Um, if you take 1 divided by 0 0.3844, you get 2.5937. So the two tables are mirror images of each other, the inverse of one another. And I've shown you this here in the the uh, uh, tables. And we can calculate the present value and future value. And what I've shown you here is what it would be in the present value table and the future value table at 10%. So one year from now, the future value of a dollar is a dollar ten. Two years from now, it's a dollar twenty-one. Three years from now, it's a dollar thirty-three. 
the inverse of that, 0.751 and, and, and so on. We're going to get into annuities. Annuities are, are payments, equal payments made over time. So if there were three payments of $1, all you'd have to do is add up the future values in order to get the future value of an annuity. 3.64, present value of the annuity is 2.49. And that's what we'd expect to see. The present value is less than the future value. But you see how the future value of annuity table and present value of an annuity table are calculated. There's nothing mysterious about it. And once you understand how these things work, uh, it, it's a lot more clear to you. And you'll be able to study these materials on your own after you download them. Last thing I've loaded up here is there is a, a, a couple of tricks that they'll do with the annuities where they'll talk about annuity in advance or uh, ordinary annuity. I don't really like the term annuity in advance. Uh, and in some textbooks, you won't even see that covered. All they're talking about is the timing of the payments. So with an ordinary annuity, we assume that the first payment is made one year from now. And here I've got the present value and future value of an ordinary annuity. Well, what if in, in this future value of an annuity means I put $1 in the bank at the end of the next three years? You notice the, the one on three years the future value is a dollar because it didn't have time to earn any interest. If I put in a dollar today and at the end of the next two years, I get 3.64 because even the, the payment that's made at the end of the next two years is going to earn interest for one year uh, at the end of year three. This is a little more in depth on the, uh, the Word document that I've got on the Google Documents, uh, but I don't want to to bore you guys with a real long lecture. So make sure and study these. Under, make sure you understand where all the numbers are coming from. Good luck, and don't give up on time value of money. You've got to conquer this subject.